A very good day to all of you, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I am assigned with a task that is completely new to me. I have never done something of this sort before. I usually deliver content on um, sciences, uh, science, particularly chemistry, physics and material science, which is of course my area. But uh, today I am going to attempt something completely different. Right? Today my uh, discussion, this clip is about my journey as a social media content creator. Okay, particularly my journey as a YouTube, all right? And, it, and I'll also try and uh, discuss about the potential of monetization in this type of content, specifically a scientific content, all right? So first thing first, let me try and uh, introduce myself formally to you. So let me try and formally introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dr. Ruchir Vijayasena. I'm attached to Institute of Technology, University of Martua. Uh, where I work as a senior lecturer, right? Uh, before I joined uh, uh, University of Moroto, I worked at uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology as a senior research scientist and, uh, and, and also the agriculture uh, pillar head, okay, uh, research pillar head. And I'm also a visiting lecturer to uh, many state and private sector universities. Let me start this uh, video, the real content, with a very uh, nice video clip. This was sent to me by uh, Mr. Kavindu Madhubhashana. So the video credit goes to him. And this is a microscopic image of a uh, drop of pond water. Okay, so you can clearly see the amazing biology uh, in this little element of nature. See uh, rotifers, you see paramecium, nematodes here and there, ciliates moving around, hide this, you know, and, you know, you can see this, we are always amazed uh, by, you know, things like this. I, I always enjoy um, observing this type of natural events, especially in microscopic world. And we also, all, all of us, most of us really would like to do that. But what is even more amazing is the device that was used to capture this video. And this is something that uh, Kavindu Madhubhashana uh, actually made by himself. Okay, so this is his own microscope that he actually made uh, in do-it-yourself type. And this was inspired, his, his uh, little microscope was inspired by one of my videos. And this is the thumbnail of my video where I showed them, uh, not only him, but uh, to a very big crowd, how we make a powerful microscope for general purposes uh, using stuff that we can find in our home okay so this is uh, so this is the device so we have you know several sheets of transparent plastic we are we on top of which we mount a general mobile camera a mobile phone any mobile phone would do these days any good mobile phone and for the optics we use something uh, you know, that's uh, that's usually thrown away. Okay, we use a CD drive. In a CD drive, we have optics special optic setup, laser optics, where we have some of the lenses. And in fact, this is the lens that we use in this device, this small microscope as the main uh, lens. All right. So, and you can you you can see for general observation, this is. I mean, this is really, really powerful. Look at the clarity of some of these images. See, these images, these videos were in par with many of the commercial and, uh, you know, teaching type microscopes. And, and uh, so this is the microscopic setup. So let me show you this small video. You can see the transparent, uh, you know, uh, the polycarbonate sheets that were used to, uh, you know, to support the whole device. And here we have mobile phone as the image capturing, video capturing uh, device. And we can, using mobile phone, we can look through the lens uh, into the microscopic world. Okay, see that some of the images you can clearly see. So you can, what you can do is this, uh, you can focus on uh, some of these objects and really, uh, you know, observe. It's, it's, it's amazing, this, this small device, it's very easy to make. You can, you can, from start to finish, you can do it completely within like one hour or two hours time, okay? And so these are some of the 
uh, the, the biologies that we have captured. Uh, here we have a stenter. Okay, you can see from you can uh, it has a unique shape, and it also it's uh, the the great thing about stenters, the unique factor about unique thing about stenters that they retry themselves in attempting to uh, uh, you know catch their free. And this is a rotif a rotifers have uh, uh, you know the ciliates that, that they use uh, to attract prey or food. And you can see the microvortices that that uh, happen around its uh, feeding center. Okay, now these are the beautiful images, and and they, these microscopes, and not only microscope, you see uh, the telescopes and things like that. These scientific devices can really, you know, open a new door, a completely new window uh, to various, uh, you know, natural phenomena, and it's amazing what we can learn from this type of system. Now, usually, I'm not. Uh, I'm not using so this is these are the type of microscope that I'm really using in my workplace electron microscope uh, scanning electron microscopes and uh, scanning um, uh, atomic force microscope and various other types but uh, to be frank I really learn many things I, I in fact I learn more things from this humble microscope uh, you know compared to uh, the very advanced microscopes that I really work with. So, so this is me. Uh, I'm in uh, middle of my life, and still learning some of these beautiful aspects about nature using this humble microscope. Imagine the power of this type of a device uh, on the hands of a child. Okay, so we see, we have. I mean, uh, these kids who are growing up without um, much of these facilities to really learn sciences, uh, you know, celebrating its true value, you know. They imagine the power of this type of small devices in their hands. You see, I always think that, you know, inquisitive child is a child who would really question about nature. And when, especially children, when they not, this is not, I mean, we should not really limit this to children, but of course, some youth and I mean, anybody, okay? Anybody who question about nature would really try and explore the nature. They want to learn about new things, you know, sciences, uh, how you know, various things work, and they will also try and collaborate with each other. So this collaboration, exploration, this uh, need to learn new stuff would really make an independent citizen. Wouldn't it? A uh, person who really believe in reason, person who can think independently, who's logical and you know can think beyond a certain frames that are imposed on it. And I think this is the citizen that we need in our country. Okay, to, to propel our country to the future and 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 to uh, you know address some of the problems related to oppression, inequity, uh, corruption, uh, drugs, uh, you know, inefficiencies, you know, the, uh, you know, various elements related to uh, exploitation and, and abuse. I mean, these are some of the very big issues that we have in our society. And I personally believe it is only through informed citizens, people who can really think independently, they are the people who can really solve the problems or the challenges uh, or mitigate the challenges that we are facing as a country. And, and so this is particularly true. And this is the main reason why I, I started my channel. I always think, so as a nation, as a country, we won't really propel to the future. It is going to be through informed citizens, people who can really think for themselves. And, and this is my channel, right? So Science with Ruchira, you can check it out. I humbly request you to uh, go and visit it. I have around uh, 234,000 subscribers at the moment. And so I, I give, uh, you know, I provide, I create the content related to many various topics, particularly maths, mathematics, uh, physics, uh, philosophy, and sometimes about politics, sometimes uh, about, you know, uh, things related to economy, 
uh, economics. So these are my key areas. And, and, and so this is my the little bit about demographics. You can see particularly uh, in my audience is particularly, uh, you know, uh, so people who are aged between uh, 20 to 40. Yes. So the majority, like 55% of my audience is in, within that age group. And mostly males. I'm not sure why uh, ladies are not really interested in this content. Content, uh, not sure. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, the scientific content, particularly, it's really, uh, you know, uh, searched and, uh, you know, subscribed by most of the, uh, you know, male subscribers and uh, audience. Uh, within this time period, I have really spoke to 1.2 million unique viewers, okay, unique individuals, uh, or would say unique um, UT profiles, which usually represent a person, uh, sometimes less, but, you know, we can consider around 1.2 million unique viewers has really uh, viewed this channel uh, uh, in their, in, in the, uh, the life cycle of the channel, okay, so this uh, provides okay so this chart is how uh, you know we have unique viewers you know rising up and down depending on how i create content some content usually get picked up some uh, not much um, so uh, 1.2 million unique viewers within one year and four months uh, fairly a new channel uh, compared to many other channels that are out there and related to science and and I'm, I'm pretty proud about myself because this is uh, humbly, of course, this is one of the channels that really reached to uh, this much of audience within a very short uh, time span. Okay, and this is uh, it's, it's it's amazing. Okay, so this is this is in fact uh, you know uh, the population distribution uh, with respect to age group in Sri Lanka 2020, of course. Uh, we see, especially this age group, uh, which is, of, of course, uh, you know, the people who are within 20 years to 40 years of age, a very important age group in any society in terms of economics, in terms of uh, political influence, in terms of, um, you know, uh, culture, many aspects, they are very important age group. So in Sri Lanka, we have uh, 7 to 8 million of, uh, you know, people who are within in this age group. So I have spoken roughly about 0.8 million unique viewers in this age category. All right. So this uh, roughly translates to 10% of the people in Sri Lanka in this uh, category, uh, which is not very good if you look at the, the percentages. However, what I want to do in my channel is that I want to reach 50% of this age group. 20 to 40 years age group by 2020. This is what I want to do. Why I would really want to do something like this? Reason is that, you know, I sincerely believe that in Sri Lanka, we need a lot of change. And, and when you look at how people change, we, we can see people change when they face difficulties. Okay, so when they, they face difficulties, people really, you know, had enough and they really want to, uh, they really need to change themselves. And some people, they are inspired to change. They see things that are, they travel, the amazing people, the changes they have uh, induced to the society. Some people are really influenced, okay, to change themselves. And some other people, of course, we have people who learn, okay, they, they, they explore knowledge. And, and when they gain new knowledge, they understand we live in very small frame that we make by ourselves and they really want to venture out. People who really want to change. But my dear friends, although people really need to change, they are inspired to, or they really want to change, people, I, I, I sincerely believe, if we need a nation to really change from their usual way, we really need to, people really need to receive enough so that change is permanent and change is sustainable. So when people receive enough content, we receive enough positive aspects, they are able to uh, change themselves. It doesn't matter how much we learn, 
how much we are inspired, how much of a struggle we are going through until we receive enough positive aspects we can never as a nation be really changed. And how do we receive? What are the things we receive? We, we receive certain things from media, we receive things from culture, peers and education. And particularly, I would like to uh, culture and fears, let's take the side. It's a completely new, uh, a big area we need to discuss. But if you take media and education and how they really influence people uh, for the change, I, I personally think it's not satisfactory. Enough. And in fact, not satisfactory. It, in many ways, it affects negative. Okay. Now, for an instance, if we take media, media has been, uh, I mean, within the last 20 years, I have seen major changes, the way media operate, all right? So we grew up as a millennial, I grew up, uh, you know, listening to uh, Sesame Street, Dostar uh, Hit, and Sudhifuncha. So these were the things that we, we grew up with. And today's children, they do not grow up with this type of content. Uh, Benton, uh, various, you know, these type of, uh, you know, uh, cartoons and contents are, you know, out there. And if you take this long teletravas that, you know, span for years, and I am personally, at least, I I am I'm really concerned about the content and the value they really, uh, you know, uh, you know, deliver to the society. And education in, in that front, we have a lot of questions as well. You see, 20 years ago, and this last 20 years, the education has really seen a major shift, as you all know. 20 years ago, knowledge was particularly central about individuals. For an example, if you want to learn about quantum physics 20 years ago, you had to talk to a professor or, or go and read a book. If you, can't, if you couldn't find any of these things, uh, it was very difficult to get this type of information, all right? But now, it's completely different. Uh, you can access knowledge. Uh, it's very easy to access knowledge uh, uh, in today's society. It's just on the palm of your hand, okay? It's just, uh, you know, it's just about, uh, you know, browsing uh, through your using your mobile device, finding content. It's just simple as that. It's very simple. All right. Now, if you want to learn quantum physics these days, it's simply you can log into YouTube, uh, type in quantum physics lectures, and you have one of the best professors uh, on quantum physics who are delivering content about quantum physics, talking direct to you. And this is the sort of uh, you know, change we talk about uh, today, right? As you can see, it's completely a paradigm shift. Within these 20 years, we had so much of change in terms of uh, knowledge, all right? However, our education system, even today, we are particularly focused on teaching new knowledge, okay? But I think it has to change because in many ways, today's learning has to be you know, skill center. We have to show our students to find skills in, in uh, you know, finding new knowledge and how to use them. And I, I think, I personally think we have to rethink how we teach science. And this is why I thought, so when we started this uh, YouTube uh, channel, uh, this is one of the, uh, the driving forces. How we can create video content not for their information value, not uh, to uh, reiterate some of these theories, but to ignite imagination. And this has been my theme. I really wanted to, uh, you know, venture into this particular area and create content accordingly. And, and these are some of the content that I've created. And this is about... Uh, um, um, a special, uh, you know, store type. This is called uh, Toplit Updraft uh, Stove. And uh, this features my uh, beautiful daughter as well. And so what I do is I, I teach the scientific content. And I, I teach some of the contents related to design of uh, these efficient curves. And I show them how to, uh, you, know, you know, make these devices. So it, not, it does not only carry that, you know, that uh, information value, it also carries uh, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, sort of 
um, uh, request to make it by yourself, then you, you will learn this thing. And these are some of the responses I get. This is just one video that I created. I have so many people making these type of devices and they, they send their video clips. And this is just some images that I could find. There were hundreds of such devices. And this was in the midst of our you know gas crisis where we couldn't really find gases and they used this. Some of these people, they actually commercially made this and, and sold. And these are, these are the impacts that we can really make in this, in this sphere. And in this video, it's again another video where I, I teach uh, uh, you know, how to make uh, these light screens. It's a way to collect insects uh, in you know, natural uh, you know, uh, systems. I teach them how to make one of these and how to uh, analyze some of these creatures uh, using mobile apps and, and also how to document. And these are some of the responses I get. So what we did was we made a small uh, you know, Facebook group and asked them to uh, you know, upload some of their videos that they have uh, captured, the bugs and all that. So these are some of the, so we had around 50 such entries. So these are some of these things. And we have each of these systems. We have students, uh, elderly people, and people who are really, you know, the, the people who are not completely related to, in any way, related to sciences or scientific careers, working out these type of devices uh, and trying to analyze these type of works. And they engage in these type of activities. And I think, I personally think it's amazing. And this is, again, the, the microscope, once again. These two images that I couldn't uh, find in my rush today. Uh, you see some of these devices that our students have made. And I think this is what we really need to focus, okay? Uh, especially in the sphere of social media, we are trying and deliver content. I think we need to deliver content, not, not reiterating some of the concepts out there. If somebody wants to find scientific concept or theory, I think there are a lot of information that are out there. In single medium, there may be some challenges, but it's out there. I think in many ways, if you can really try and deliver uh, content that may spark some imagination, uh, you know, invite people to try and explore nature, the sciences by themselves, I think that's the spirit that we really need to pursue. Okay, this is not, however, I really want to uh, say this is not a single effort. There are so many channels out there in Sri Lanka. I have uh, found four of them. I want to show you four such channels. Uh, Tech Track is a very uh, familiar channel about uh, delivering a lot of scientific content in single media. We have Ramu talking about so many related aspects. We have um, Video Kata, again, very similar channel uh, content. Uh, very much related to sciences and engineering. And we have, uh, again, uh, Nissan, uh, who's a YouTuber, of course, uh, works on, especially in, uh, you know, uh, in areas related to electronics and Arduino, uh, robotics and things like that. So I really want to highlight something. And it is the, the we don't sometimes recognize the amount of people that are addressed by this type of channels. They are in millions. And we don't really recognize. I think it's one of the, uh, the areas that we, as a society, we don't really appreciate. But uh, let me present these uh, channels to you and maybe you can, can go and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes visit some of these channels. They are amazing, right? Uh, so let me talk about some of the challenges in social media, all right? Um, you know, social media uh, is particularly focused on audience retention. Because that's, that's their, uh, you know, business model. If you take Facebook, particularly if you take uh, YouTube, for instance, uh, YouTube would always try to retain uh, a, a viewer as long as it can. So how to do that is, is basically they are trying to promote content that are much more clickable. So we, we call this... Uh, click-through rate. So if you show a particular video, let's say 100 times, how many times it gets clicked? It's a very important aspect that they will look at. And they will also look at something called average watch time. So if you have a high CTR 
and high average watch time usually these type of content get uh, you know uh, picked up in the in, in youtube algorithm and similarly in many other social media setups you always want uh, people to retain and uh, use in these two matrices you can roughly uh, I'm, i'm sure they use so many other matrices but usually uh, the, this is what it is all right so particularly when it comes to social media in delivering scientific content there's a major challenge now for an instance let me let me show and uh, uh, show you an instance uh, where i uh, you know when i i'll be trying to uh, watch one of my own channels so this i haven't really logged in uh, using anonymous account or, or without logging in if you go and search science with ruchir and you go to a channel so you can perfectly you can clearly see the type of contents that are suggested to you and some of these contents they have millions of views which means that they are very good they have performed very uh, uh, i mean they are very good in terms of their performance in the youtube uh, sphere okay so this is the, I, when we talk about some of these contents uh, especially in uh, uh, youtube the main challenge is that there's so much of uh, videos that are out there they are so good and it's very easy for a viewer to simply uh, click to another video and and really watch it not watching any scientific boring scientific information or, or a content okay so that is the biggest challenge and how you really want if you really so this is something that i really learned uh, in my journey if you really want to deliver content related to sciences usually they are not the favorite in sri lanka i can show you some of the the, the trending videos i in fact i searched uh, in the internet yesterday wanted to show you some of the trending areas of sri lanka <laughs> i really couldn't because this content there are so many you know various they are into various different dimensions and and sometimes you can't show it uh, uh, to uh, you know proper audience like this okay so these are the contents that are usually said so if you really want to deliver something like science you need to really wrap it very nicely so this is what i do so if i want to discuss about the conservation of angular momentum in the rotating bodies i would take an example and and i i sometimes take the help of my beautiful daughter in so doing some of these activities trying to make i a uh, presentable uh, as possible for an example how a particular how a, a boomerang work use i uh, use some of these application to demonstrate the the and 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 uh, try and explain some of these concepts uh, how we make uh, you know how we generate uh, robotic systems what are the aspects that are related to various aspects that are related to these so this you you would uh, i mean if you try and deliver the straight content if you really want to talk about theories youtube is usually not a place uh, that can you know uh, attract lot of audience but instead you talk about a project uh, this beautiful uh, project this i i actually made this to uh, my own daughter and 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 you see if you want to uh, you know talk about a concept related to optics you show something very beautiful something very dramatic as a thumbnail and this always captures uh, interest arouses interest uh, in various group not only people who are interested in sciences but also other people remember we are going for 50% 50% audience of that particular age group so so this is very very important if you really want to uh, discuss about how uh, oxidation works you have this you know sort of a dramatic uh, uh, image that is going in with a uh, interesting title and that is how you present so it is some of one of the things that i really uh, learned through my journey so you can see if i want to discuss about not that i sometimes discuss some of the key areas uh, especially related to some of the you know uh, you know physics con- uh, uh, theories and things i use sometimes i do that as well but you can see if i really try and deliver some of the theories directly what will happen is we get very low viewership but instead the same theory delivered using application and something a very interesting sort of application usually attract 
fairly high amount of um, you know um, views as well as higher average watch time okay so this is very this is one of the things that i really learn through uh, making a lot of mistakes of course uh, and it's very very important how we wrap this content um, to deliver this in social media particularly in youtube i think in facebook and many other media it may be even hard all right uh, so let us uh, talk about little bit about the monetization potential as well okay now in um, i mean uh, this is one of the areas that i mm, not really uh, talked much in my uh, in previous uh, you know sort of um, you know uh, lectures or content uh, i myself have monetized my youtube channel so what i do is uh, i use uh, the money that is coming from my youtube channel and and i funnel it to uh, a small company that i created to you know create this small microscopes um, the telescope small scientific device and this is a company that is uh, not for profit i don't do it for profit Uh, i think it is a uh, uh, large value in doing a social enterprise in this aspect so i have my own personal goals in terms of monetization uh, but i mean i don't think that anybody needs to everybody needs to have similar goals they can of course monetize and use this uh, funds for themselves but in many ways the monetization there's a very big monetization potential especially uh for not only for scientific content but for many other contents in in social media now so this is the typical scenario at least in our country now we have lot of viewership dedicated for some of the media including television uh, radio and uh, print media and things like that now so these contents are usually delivered to you okay so whatever that is shown on the tv Uh, you have to watch but imagine how it will look 10 years from now so 10 years from now and we see this lot of uh, new devices uh, they come with their the inherent facility to connect with the internet uh, connect with youtube connect with facebook sometimes and when you have that ability usually what will happen is you can directly get content from these uh, resources like youtube and you can watch them. and this is happening right now and and sri lanka i think in many ways we are lagging but many other countries it's all about um user centric content we we call this uh, we call this video on demand if you are talking about video content video on demand and it's happening right now and imagine what sort of uh, potential that there is for this type of a conversation and at the moment for televisions and things like that at least in sri lanka billions of rupees are spent at, as advertising uh, costs all right imagine all that or most of that uh, you know funds going to social media and especially in advertising speed and this is, i mean this will definitely have this is something that's going to happen in uh, uh, next previous time so uh, to be uh, i mean so let's take 10 years from now and people who make content right now and have a very good base in that sphere will always have a higher uh, advantage in that sense all right so i think in many ways uh, especially social media it's very good place for advertising because you have users profiles that are defined Uh, based on their activities and you can uh, you know advertisers can really target advertisement so it's, it's they are much more efficient uh, in terms of effectivity uh, of course uh, the delivery as well as cost okay so i mean there's a high tendency that lot of advertising uh, you know uh, budget will be dedicated into some of these uh, social media i think in many ways for the content creators some of these uh, revenues will go back to this content creators and this is something really encouraging and and one of the things that we really capitalize people who want to make contents uh, really need to capitalize and uh, you know revenue 
uh, and monetization is not only limited, especially in YouTube, places like YouTube, it's not only limited to advertising. Now, for an instance, although I don't perceive any of these things, I have been invited in many of occasions to come and deliver uh, talks and workshops uh, for many uh, uh, you know, private organizations. And they were willing to, uh, you know, uh, pay, uh, uh, you know, relevant, if there are any covering costs, they were really happy to, uh, you know, you know, bear. Okay, so this is one of the areas that you can really work on. And, and if you really work as a monetizer, uh, you really work, work as a content creator, uh, when you uh, develop that sort of trust and, and when you uh, deliver quality content, this will ultimately come. And this is one of the ways that you can learn a uh, uh, lot of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of potential in this area. And also you can even organize training programs. Now, for an, imagine this lot of interest in Sri Lanka to learn about nanotechnology, quantum physics, uh, robotics, various, you know, space related uh, con contents. And, and I'm pretty sure that I, if I create something uh, at a workshop or a training uh, session, or a training, uh, yeah, training, um, even a center, uh, there are a lot of interest, and there will be people who really want to invest on that. Uh, although I don't do, I mean, this big potential that uh, you can capitalize, and you can imagine how you can uh, promote your product and services, selling product directly, and most of the YouTubers. Uh, who really capitalize on this, you know, say in sphere, especially science sphere, they have their own uh, science related, uh, you know, products and services that they provide. And I think I'm pretty sure this big uh, um, uh, potential in that area as well. And more than all, imagine how we can channel some of these funding to, you know, fund real. Um, you know, uh, social enterprises. And this is one of my goals. And I, I, I fund almost all the, the funding that I receive from my YouTube revenue, as my YouTube revenue, to uh, enhance the productivity of our scientific learning using uh, using some of the, you know, microscope and things like that. I want to make a company that deliver, not to profit, uh, deliver these type of uh, devices to general masses and, and try to, and help them to uh, explore the nature that is around them. And imagine the power or, or the impact, that real impact can really, you know, uh, happen uh, and, and occur if we can do something in a, in a very big scale. And I think YouTube is primarily, is, although we don't uh, talk about this uh, much, uh, YouTube and social media is also a very good place to make a good brand. And I think in many ways, um, as a YouTuber, if you won't really get in uh, to this peer as a content creator, you need starting from the beginning, you need to really look at making your own brand. You know, emerge as a you know, personality that is trusted, deliver good content, uh, you know, that has a, uh, you know, that, that uh, try and contain, uh, deliver a value. So this is very, very important, especially people who really want to get into this peer. This is very important because brand always carries a huge value. Okay. And we don't sometimes recognize this. And in a, so many of the other opportunities are simply the manifestation of having a good brand around your channel. And for me, however, uh, there's something that I really uh, sort of uh, admire. And, and really like to do and really motive, motivate me to, uh, you, know, you know, dedicate my energy to continuously do something like this. You know, delivering scientific content is not always easy, so especially if you are a lecturer and if you have time, if you have limited time, you have very short time to dedicate for these type of activities. Very tough, can be very tough sometimes, but there's something that really encouraged me to do this. Now, over uh, this short uh, span of um, one year and four months, my videos have, you know, scored, um, you know, total view time of one million hours. One million hours uh, roughly translate to 
115 years. And that, my friends, is, uh, I'm pretty sure within the, the, the lifetime of my channel, I will, I will deliver content, uh, you know, several times of my own lifetime. Isn't that something? Uh, isn't that something that you can really, uh, you know, inspire to, uh, you know, really work on? And at least for me, it is. I think this is something that I will even remember in my death. Because, you know, delivering quality content dedicated to science and reason uh, many times uh, uh, through this internet, especially the one can if we if a person can do it many times uh, of his or his his uh, whole lifetime i think that's a major thing that's a great thing uh, see this has been the inspiration for me uh, over this uh, time period so with that i would like to conclude uh, my small sessions of uh, in summary so i showed some of the uh, the concepts uh, the what 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 really make me interested uh, in dedicating my time to youtube why I create this content, what is my philosophy in doing that, uh, some of the strategies that I use and, and uh, how we can really monetize this type of content. Okay, so with that, I would like to conclude. Uh, thank you very much and, and thanks for the invitation as well. It's been an amazing uh, opportunity uh, to uh, you know, discuss about this topic. Thank you.